Welcome to my lecture online. Now here we have a very interesting problem, a little bit different. We have a, let's say, metal core and an insulating material around the core. And the length of that pipe here is 20 centimeters. We have an inside diameter and an outside diameter, or I should say radius, inside radius and outside radius for the insulating material, A and B. We have a temperature on the inside and a temperature on the outside. Now the temperature on the outside remains at zero degrees centigrade for the entire length. But the temperature on the inside is a variable temperature. That's why we have as a title the variable temperature. It's 100 degrees centigrade at the front and zero degrees centigrade at the back for the inside. Now what we're trying to do here is come up with an equation dq dt that is a function of position x. We're trying to find the rate of heat transfer across the insulated material as a function of position. And the way to do that is to think of it as grabbing a small little segment along the length of this, this uh, pipe here. And the distance from there to there would be called a dx. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the dq dt for that particular dx, for that particular location, which is a distance x away from the front end of the cylinder. Also, we need to somehow express the temperature of the inside as a function of position. On the outside, it's easy. It's 0 degrees everywhere. But on the inside, it goes from 100, when x equals 0, to 0, when x equals 20 centimeters. So in this case, we can say that t as a function of a is equal to some slope times x plus 100 because when x is equal to 0 the temperature is 100 degrees so let's see here the temperature drops off 100 degrees over distance of 20 centimeters that's a negative 100 divided by 20 or a negative 5 so it's negative 5x plus 100 when the x is in centimeters so we know that x is in centimeters so I guess I should write this as centimeters like that okay so we keep that in mind so now we have an expression for the inside temperature and an expression for the outside temperature also we kept the equation that we derived in the previous couple of videos this is the temperature or the dq dt as a function of uh, inside and outside temperatures and a function of the inside and outside radii so we need to keep that in mind as well so I think now we're ready to plug that into our equation here. We can say that dq dt, dq dt for a small little segment of the entire cylinder is going to be equal to k times 2 pi times l. Now l would be the length. In this case, the length would be a dx. We divide that by the natural log of b divided by a. Now we have the outside diameter being... 0.4 centimeters larger than the inside diameter, but we don't know the inside diameter. We need to calculate it first. We're told that the area of the inside cylinder, that's metal, is 2 centimeters squared. So we know that the area is equal to pi a squared, and the area is equal to 2. That means 2 is equal to pi a squared, or a squared is equal to, let's see here, 2 divided by pi, which means that a is equal to the square root of 2 divided by pi. So yes, unfortunately, we first have to calculate the A, the, uh, well, it's not area, I should say the uh, distance from the center to the, to the uh, start of the insulating material. So 2 divided by pi, take the square root of that, that's 0.8, close enough. All right, so we'll round it off to 0 0.8 centimeters. So if A is equal to that, and b is 0.4 larger, then we know that b is equal to 1.2 centimeters. And so those are the two values which we're going to plug in, in here. So we have the natural log of b, which is 1.2, divided by the nat, divided by a, which is 0.8. And then we have the temperature difference, t at a. Well, t at a, which is a function of x, can be expressed as minus 5x plus 100, where x is the distance from the front to that area that little segment there so that's ta which is minus 5x plus 100 and subtract from that the temperature of b which is the outside which is also which is always equal to zero so now we have the qdt which is equal to k that's a constant 2 pi those are constants times dx 
divided by the natural log of 1.2 divided by 8, which is the natural log of 1.5, times minus 5x plus 100. I thought that it might be a good idea to go ahead and plug in a k and get a, maybe a little bit cleaner of an equation here. So let's say that we have k is equal to 0 0.01 calories per centimeter per Kelvin per second. So k would then be expressed in terms of calories per centimeter per, ke per Kelvin per second, the amount of heat flow in terms of calories, and let's plug that in here to see what we would get. So then we would get dq dt is equal to 0 0.01 times 2 pi divided by the natural log of 1.5, so this all would turn into a constant, times the quantity minus 5x plus 100 and times dx. So now we have a much cleaner equation with those numbers, so let's get a calculator out. So we end up with 0 0.01 times 2 times pi divided by the natural log of 1.5 and that gives us 0.155. Let me go ahead and write that down. Let me put this here. All right, so this would be dq dt, which is equal to 0 0.155 times a minus 5x plus 100 times dx. And then if we multiply that through, we get dq dt is equal to, let's multiply it times 5, times 5, so we get uh, minus 0.775x plus 100 times that would be 15.5, and the whole thing multiplied times dx. And so this is a much cleaner equation that's easier to see, so that we have dq dt as a function of x, and we multiply times dx because that's only good for a specific location on that cylinder, and for different values of x, we get different values of dq dt. Now let's see if this works out, because at the very end, when x equals 20, at the very end, the difference in the temperature between the outside and inside is zero, and therefore dq dt should be zero. So if we plug in x equals 20, 20 times this does indeed give us a negative 15.5, so 15, negative 15.5 plus 15.5 is zero, we get zero heat transfer at the very end, Makes sense. And in the front, when x equals 0, we get 15.5 times dx. That would be the heat transfer at the very front end of the, of the cylinder, where the difference is 100 degrees centigrade. So that makes sense as well. And so here's a much, much nicer equation expressing the uh, dqdt as a function of position along the pipe. And that's how it's done.